and welcome. The Losers is a 32-issue series from 2003, written by Andy Diggle and primarily illustrated by Jock. This was another successful attempt to take an older DC concept and reimagine it as a Vertigo property, although this modern version of The Losers bears very little resemblance to the original team from 1969. In fact, the writer admits having not read any of The Losers comics before submitting his series proposal. Some character names are references to the original characters, but beyond that, these are two completely dissimilar teams. An interesting side note about the original team, all of the characters in The Losers had their own solo adventures through the years in a variety of different titles. In 1969, they were put together and became the war comic version of the Justice League. Originally, the comic was proposed as a four-issue, limited series. However, Editorial was quite happy with Diggle's reinterpretation, so they asked him to turn the limited series into an ongoing series. This change is quite noticeable in the first story. The ending to the first arc does seem like it was heading towards a definitive conclusion, but then there's a twist, and this launches the series in a new direction. The core of The Losers is quite easy to describe. It's a caper. It's a heist movie. And for the most part, it seems immensely plausible. It's centered around the team attempting to clear their name following a failed mission. They go underground, investigate the forces conspiring against them, and then they strike back. Eventually, they discover the person that set them up and who is controlling everything from the shadows is an enigmatic CIA agent named Max. There are a lot of moving parts in the story, and they're all quite cohesive. There is a fast-paced, high-tension flow that is expertly managed. And in the middle of this chaos, all the characters are given room to breathe and develop. Like a good action movie, it gently pushes against one's suspension of disbelief, but not to the point where it breaks. Most of all, it's a series that never loses sight of its direction. The character of Max is also a very compelling antagonist. He's clever, resourceful, and highly focused on his endgame. He also personifies the American dream taken to its logical extreme. He wants his independence, and he wants the riches the world has to offer. If necessary, he will achieve this with the threat of overwhelming nuclear destruction. In other words, he's a terrorist, using the American principles as his guideline. Like any fanatic, he believes this will create a utopian dictatorship. He will forcefully unite the world and control it. For his own benefit, of course. At only 32 issues, it feels like a series that was cancelled. But Andy Diggle has stated this wasn't the case. Like any heist movie, it has to end at some point, and there has to be a resolution. In the case of The Losers, Diggle kept the story lean, and he got to the conclusion at the appropriate time. So while there was more story potential, the series utilized the old show business trick. It left the audience wanting more. While The Losers is a very well-done series, there is one noticeable weakness. The ultimate evil plan hatched by Max is somewhat ridiculous. It's highly dependent on a natural disaster taking place. While there is a plot that sets the disaster up and presents it as an imminent possibility, it still feels quite engineered. It stands out not because it's ridiculous, but because the bulk of the series feels quite natural and grounded. Basically, it's not impossible, but it seems highly suspect, and it feels a tad super villainy. Regardless, it's still a wild, satisfying ride. Of course, the 2010 Losers movie needs a brief mention. The movie attempts to capture the complex, well-paced story in the series, but it focuses too much on the big-budget action sequences and the soundbite character moments. It feels somewhat hollow and like a generic action movie. It's not the worst film of all time, but it won't inspire anyone to pick up the source material. In the end, The Losers is a very tight, action-packed series. The ending isn't perfect, and it does feel a touch abrupt, but not so much that it devalues the story that preceded it. It's a very well-managed caper, and, quite simply, it succeeds as intended. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.